Alrighty, here we are for the start of week eight. We have four games for you tonight, starting off with the Swagger City Defenders versus the San Diego Samurais. As this first batter is Vo is going to hit it to the right field, and Rampage is going to make a sliding trap. That's not going to be a catch. That's going to be a base hit to lead off the game, and it's going to be Reagan Storm. The shortstop batting second for the defenders takes a weird swing, 0-1, and, and then takes 0-2. And, Bringing it back to a 2-2 count, and fouls this one off. Sean Wazanya is going to be your pitcher for the Samurais, and the 2-2 pitch to Storm gets him. Strike number three. That's the first out of the inning, and now it's Braxton Pennington, the right fielder. Wazanya has, this is his fourth game pitching with a 360 ERA, 110 whip, and 15 strikeouts. As this is a 2-0 count to Pennington, who takes the ball on the outside part of the plate. And a 3-1 count, fouls it back, so now it's the full count. The payoff pitch by Wazania is swung on and missed, again, on the outside part. And that's going to be out number two, two strikeouts in a row. Which will bring up Pansy Herrera, the first baseman, batting fourth for the defenders. And this ball is going to be low. Waycaster is going to get it. And now we have a runner in a pickle. Vo couldn't get the second, didn't make up his mind, and Itachi... We'll go ahead and run him down. That'll be a caught stealing. And that's going to be it for the defenders after the base hit. There's nothing doing on a running mistake. So now it will be the Samurais taking their first cuts against Dominic Pretzel. And R3 hits the first pitch thrown by him. Over to first. That'll be the first out. And Rampage, sorry, Rampage is in. So Dominic Pretzel has been pitching phenomenal this year. Don't mind the ERA. Uh, he does give up a few runs, but in five games, uh, this is his fifth game that he started, he has, I think, 36 strikeouts. 36 strikeouts in 24 innings with a whip of 122, and that ERA is now under 3 at 292. And now on an 0-2 count, he's looking for his 37th, and he gets a foul ball. Just outside, 98 on the corner. That's that's rough to hit. That's why he has so many strikeouts, but Mizki says, I don't care. One, two count. I'm going to rip it to right field. That's going to be a two-out single. So Itachi is going to go ahead and hit here with two outs and a runner on first. And the runner goes, and it's a pitch out. The ball is low. Doesn't matter. Storm will field it on a hop, and out number three caught stealing for Mizki. I believe that is her sixth, uh, fifth stolen base, or sorry, caught stealing on the year. She's not not great on the feet, so not sure what was going on there. So both runners, I'm sorry, both teams have a base running mistake to end the inning in the first. Now it's top of the second, it's still going to be Herrera. Full count and the payoff pitch is fouled off. And that ball's at the top of the zone, 95 miles an hour. It's going to be caught looking. So, th three strikeouts for Azania here already. And now it's Levi Hugh. Number 26. 
Terribly sorry about that. So Tachi who walks there, and that's going to bring up Cheesecake. And Cheesecake's going to have a 2-0 count quickly. And make that 3-0. Dominic Pretzel, who does not walk pretty much anybody. And this ball is thrown away on the pickoff play. That's going to easily get Itachi to second. He might be thinking 3 here, and then he does. Pennington will grab it and throw it to third, but not even close or in time. And that's going to be a 2-base error. And now four straight to Cheesecake, something that Pretzel does not do often. Uh, so we're seeing a couple mishaps here by the pitcher. And that's going to put him in a dangerous position. And now he's going to pick him off again after that Aaron throw. And Anki will face Pretzel with no outs and runners at the corners. Base hit, even a double play will grab a run for the Samurais. And they won two count. This ball is outside. And this ball is going to be lined up the middle past the diving second baseman. That's going to get through all the way to the track. Lamb is going to have an issue fielding it. It's going to get it to the cutoff man. Herrera will throw it. Uh, won't throw it. Wow. That's uh, a two out. I'm sorry, a no out two run double for Anki, which will bring up King Gooder. And King Gooder is all, already at 2-0. So this is a very unlike Pretzel, as he hasn't walked many batters. I think only two the entire season. Maybe three. Uh, it'd be three, two today. Only had one coming into this game. So he's already doubled his walks. And that's going to be the first out of the inning on the pop fly. That's going to be Emilio Whitaker, who still has yet to sit. She is hurt. The manager, I guess, does not seem to understand or care but Whitaker will still be playing even though she's in pain. And quickly down 0-2 to Pretzel. Takes the ball inside. And now this ball gets away from Kiki, the catcher, and the runner will advance 90 feet. And Whitaker, doesn't matter if she's hurt, tired, or anything else, she will still get another hit. She has... It's weird, she's been injured, but... Here she is, on its hair still. So, don't mind her. She just limps the first with a base hit and RBI single, which will bring up Dylan Waycaster, the ninth batter. Catching today. The one-two count to him. It is going to be swung on and hit up the middle. That's going to be another base hit. Very unlike Pretzel here for the defenders. Uh, it must be something in the water he drank. He might feel a little ill. I'm not sure. But uh, either way, not doing so hot. It's going to be R3 with runners on first and second. Only one out. And he's going to hit this one. Left field. This ball will get down inside the line. Vo is going to field it cleanly and throw it to third. No relay. Well, they are going to relay home, but no need. Uh, the Whitaker was already on her way home. I'm sorry, in the dugout. So that's going to be another RBI single, which will bring up Eli Rampage. And Pretzel, again, very unlike him. 3-0 count. Just not his day today. Uh, I would not put it past the Samurai's manager to ruin the team's water. I would probably agree there. Uh, the Samurai's manager will do anything it takes to get the W. It doesn't matter what it is, as there is another walk for Pretzel, the third already in the second inning. And he's tripled the amount of walks he's done in his season already. So now it's going to be Miski, who had a base hit last time, and then ran herself out of the inning. Bases loaded, one out, one, two counts, fouled off. And now a ball on the outside. And she's going to go down swinging. So Pretzel does get a strikeout here. But at what cost? As here it is, two outs. Bases loaded still. And it is Itachi. 
Tachi has been doing better, and this ball is going to get away from the, the catcher, and the base runner waycaster, the slow catcher, decides not to go, and Itachi's going to line this one over to third, so Pretzel does get out of it, but not before the Samurai score four due to a couple mishaps by Pretzel. So here is Navy Mathis, the second baseman, batting eighth today. Getting his first at bat against Wazanya. And this ball is going to be fouled off, so a 2 2 count. Swung on and missed. Out number one. Now batting the center fielder, number 10. Now it's the center fielder, Ryan Lamb. Batting ninth. And Lamb goes down quickly on three straight strikes. So the leadoff batter, Vo, Phineas Vo, who plays left, who had a single in his first at bat, hit to right field, is quickly down 0 and 2. And he's going to hit this one to left field, but foul. And down he goes on strikes. So, three up, three down. Go the defenders. Wazanya cleaning house right now. And that's going to bring up five, six, seven for the Samurai's Cheesecake, who walked his last at bat. He'll face Pretzel, who's already at 57 pitches through only two innings. Make that two and a third if this is caught by storm, which it is. So now it's Anki who had the two-run double. And that ball is going to be fouled, but barely. And Anki is going to take this one for a ride deep to right field. This ball is out of here. Anki on a 2-2 count gets a hold of this one. It's a solo shot. 385 foot, a second of the year, and 10th RBI. He's already got three today of the four, four sorry, five runs. Looking to be the MVP candidate of tonight's game. And now it's King Gooder. Quickly down 0-2. And this ball's going to be hit up the middle for a single. And Gooder does have some speed. Let's we'll see if they want to move him around uh, up 5 nothing. Be a little aggressive. And that'll do it for Pretzel. It's not going to close the book on him just yet. He is responsible for the runner on first. And now it's Whitaker who's going to hit this to left field through the third base shortstop hole. That's going to be the sixth hole for those who do not know. Which will bring up Dylan Waycaster, who already had a hit himself. And it's Alex Alexander who comes in for Pretzel. ERA is 750 with a two flat whip and 12 strikeouts. Waycaster swings through that. It's going to be a 2 1 count in the pitch. It's going to be fouled off to the right side. And Waycaster's down on strikes. That'll be the second out. And now it's R3. R3 down 0-2, oh fouls that one off. The next pitch is going to be hit down the third baseline. Hugh will grab it, and the throw, the long throw from deep in the hole will get him. That's going to be the final out for the third, but not before they do score one more on the solo shot. It's going to be Sean Wazania, who already has seven strikeouts in three innings, and that'll be nine outs total. He's got seven of them being the strikeout. Looking for number eight here on a 1-2 count. The pitch is high, trying to get Storm to chase. Storm wisely lays off, and then fouls the low pitch. And then a slider right in there, 86 miles an hour. Sit him down, that's number eight today. Out of 10 batters, striking out 80% of the batters he is facing. That is crazy as he might be going for a record here if he continues this pace. 
He'll be at 20 strikeouts in, what, five innings? Six innings is crazy. And that's going to be another strikeout. Make it nine now. And this ball will be hit to Miski on one pitch. And that's going to be the third out. So nothing for the defenders as Bazzani is pitching phenomenal here. Eli Rampage is going to take his first look against Alexander. And he's going to ground this one over to second base. Mathis fields it cleanly. Out number one. Miski's going to go down on strikes. That's going to be the second out. To bring up Itachi, who lined out the third with the bases loaded uh, two innings ago. And now it's a 2-2 count. The ball is in there. And this ball's going to be dribbled just in front of the plate. Kiki's going to field it cleanly. And easy throw over to Rare for the final out. So nothing for the Samurais. Wazanya with nine strikeouts will face five, six, seven. It's gonna be a Hugh to lead things off, and he has a walk in his first at bat. It seems to be the only mistake Wazanya had today. And now it's an 0-2 count, looking for his tenth strikeout already. Good eye by Hugh there. And fools him on that changeup. That's going to be out number three and ten strikeouts through four and a third. Yep, four and a third. So it's going to be Carrera, the DH, who's going to line this one, but way foul. And this ball's going to be lined up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Now batting the catcher, number five. This ball's going to be grounded over short. That's going to be a 6 4. Whitaker taking her sweet, sweet time. I'm sorry, Miski. Sweet, sweet time on that. And that's going to be a double play to end the inning. So again, through five, your score is five to zero with the Samurais leading. It's going to be Cheesecake leading things off the DH today versus Alex Alexander. Two two count. The pitch is softly lined over to Hugh off the hands. And that's going to be the first out. Anki, who is two for two with a home run and a two run double, three of the five RBIs today. Looks at ball two, and then takes a slider. Change up down and out. 3-1 count, looking for his pitch. He gets it and fouls it straight back. He is on it. And there is a pitch that is lofted to short center, and that's going to get down for a single. Anki has his third hit of the evening, which will bring up King Gooder. Gooder is usually the backup center fielder, but today he is playing like a starter. This ball is roped to left center field. That's going to get all the way to the wall. And with both his and Anki's speed, that'll be extra bases. Anki will go ahead and score. And Gooder is going to have himself an RBI double. 6-0 Samurais. And now it's Whitaker, who also has a hit today. Even with her injured status. Might want to get some team doctors out there to check on her. And she's going to pop this up to the catcher. Kiki will catch it for out number two.
Waycaster, 3-1 count. The pitch is fouled up back. And now Waycaster hits this one deep to left center. That's going to one-hop the, the fence, stay at the base. That's going to be an RBI double trade places there with Gooder. 7-0 here, Samurais in the bottom of the fifth. They are on a tear the last couple games. So R3 is down 0 and 2, fouls this one back. And he's going to hit this one, but foul. And he's going to pop this one up behind home plate. Catcher will field it for the final out. So they do get two in the bottom of the fifth, making it a 7 0 game. Sean was on you. We'll head back out there. 73 pitches through 5 with 10 strikeouts. Looking to do even more. Maybe get a complete game shutout. Let's see. That's ball's going to be over to second base. Out number 1. Now batting the center fielder. Number 10. This ball's going to be hit up the middle. It's going to be Whitaker, and she's going to throw it to first, out number two. So two quick outs is going to save him save him some pitches, which is good for the Samurais. And this ball's going to be hit to the right side, and Rampage will field it. Throw it in the second. They have a two-out hit for the defenders. That was Vo, and here is Storm. He's 0 for 2. He's batting 420 on the year with four homers and 11 RBIs, but he's going to pop this first pitch. Up to Whitaker at short. Two outs. Make it three. Nothing for the defenders here. Now batting the right fielder. Number 14. This ball is hit to center. Adam will feel it. Oh, sorry. Ram. La Ryan Lamb will field it. Out number one. Ridgewood is in. I forgot to announce that last inning. And this ball is going to be hit to center. Lamb is busy out there today. And it's going to be a single. Now the first baseman, number 26. And now it's Itachi. Tachi's 1-2 count. Fouled back. And this ball is going to be laced left field. That's going to be a single for Itachi. Runners on first and second with one out. And now it is Cheesecake who is 0 for 2 with a walk. Cheesecake is going to pop this up. Infield fly is in effect. And that will be out number two, regardless if he caught it. For those who do not know, infield fly is to prevent double plays and triple plays from happening. Runners on first and second. Two outs. It's Anki, who has three hits today, trying to make it four through six. And he's going to ground this one slowly to Mathis at second. Out number three. So your score here going to the top of the seventh is seven nothing. Now batting the right fielder, number thirty-eight. Leading things off for Pennington. I'm sorry, leading things off for the defenders is Pennington, who's going to take this first pitch to center. Uh, defenders have been. It seems like if they swing early, they're getting hits or at least putting the ball in play. And if they do not, they are striking out. Zanya is still stuck on ten strikeouts. So it'll be Herrera to face Wazana here. 84th pitch coming in. That's going to be a ball. And this ball's going to be grounded over to third to second. That's a 5-4-3 double play. 
So early outs there. Will help Wazanya go deeper into this game. And this first pitch swinging over to shortstop. Whitaker is going to make the long throw. Out number three. Even with a bum arm, she's still making the plays. 7 nothing still. Stretch time here. Roddy Wedgwood, Gooder, 3-1 count, foul ball. And the payoff pitch is going to be a slider in there, out number one. So here's Whitaker. He's not going to face, she is not going to face Ridgewood. It's going to be Cutter. And Whitaker's two for three with two singles, including an RBI. Batting 210 on the year with four homers and 12 RBIs. Almost gets hits that hit there. And she swings over the curveball. And then looks at a pitch inside. That's going to be out number two. Correa versus Wazania and this ball is again first pitch swing and getting a base hit so as long as the defenders are swinging early uh, it seems like I said they're getting hits but then you have a, a batter who swings at the first pitch and grounds out for a double play so it's kind of a double-edged sword they're getting hits but they're also getting themselves out and now it's an 0-2 count the 91st pitch is up high Pitch is going to be swung on and hit to deep left field. R3 is going back at the track. Caught for out number one. So here is Navy. 0 for 2. Lasagna looking to get the complete game. So a nice ground ball to roll it over. Would help him in this case. And he does get the ground ball. But it's going to be in the hole. Whitaker will field it off of the glove of Anki. But both runners will be safe as that was a hard hit ball. And Ryan Lamb is going to be taken out. It's going to be Ren Manning. And that'll do it for Sean Wazania, who leaves the game but is responsible for the runners on first and second. Bob Davis is going to come in to try to save the day. And he's going to get the first pitch. I'm sorry, first... Third pitch, ground ball to third. It's going to be a double play, so he does exactly what he came in to do, and that is clean things up. And now it's going to be R3, Ron Ron, to face Lola, I'm sorry, Cambry Cutter. Lola Sausage is in for running as a defensive replacement. will play the outfield and then shift some people over. Here is Eli Rampage getting his fifth at bat, I believe. And he's going to hit this one to Storm at short. Great arm over there, out number two. So Miski stands in, two singles, two for four, batting 381 on the season, versing Cutter, who does not throw a Cutter. And Miski's going to hit this one up the middle. Storm's going to make a nice diving play. Great arm and will get her, even with the speed of Miski. So, nothing for the Samurais in the bottom of the eighth. Last at-bats for the defenders, who's going to start with the top of the lineup. With Finnis Vo, who is two for three. Now playing center after the defensive replacement. And he's going to hit this one to right center. And out there will be Rampage, who ranges over. Catches it. For the first out.
Storm on a 1-2 count holds back. And the next pitch is low, so the full count pitch is fouled off. And he goes down on strikes again. Second time tonight for Storm. And last at bats for uh, the defenders last out here. Goes to Braxton Pennington. Let's see if he has any rally in him. Takes the ball right down the middle, so last strike. Takes the ball low. Full count, two outs, payoff pitch, swung on, hit towards second base. Marshall ranges to her right, takes her time, and throws him out. So the defenders are going to be shut out here by a final score of 7-0. to zero. Great performance by Sean Mazzania. And anybody who hit on the Samurais, specifically Anki, has got to be your MVP today. Sean Mazzania with 10 strikeouts. Uh, threw five innings and then didn't get anything else after that, but still a great performance. We'll advance 2-0, and Pretzel will take the loss. He's now 2-3. Very uncharacteristic with an error and three walks, only one strikeout. Your MVP is going to be Anki, Sean Wazania, and King Gooder. And that's going to be the first game. Your second game here will be Me Machine vs. Slump Busters. So let's get this going. Alrighty, we are here in game two. It's going to be Wakanda Me Machine vs. Pistol Park Slump Busters. Dad Lawrence will stand in and lead things off for Mean Machine versus Dean Deputy. And his first at bat will be grounded over to short, out number one. I apologize if you're going to hear my mechanical keyboard, as Carp will be the second batter. And she's going to take a walk by Deputy. So that'll bring up Better Maseus, who is batting 491 on the season with four homers and 11 RBI. She has been on a tear of late. And here she's going to hit the ball hard, but right at Roberson. And that's going to be out number two, which will bring up Ned Burdock. Burdock will take a ball, 2-1 count. Ball outside. Make it a 3-1, and now ball four. Deputy gives up another walk. And now it is Spray Hugh, the shortstop, who's going to hit this one over to right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. They're not going to test the arm of Branch. So they will have the bases loaded for Braden Copeland. The first baseman who's batting six. And this ball is down the line and fair. It's going to go into foul territory. Run, run will score. Two runs will score. Will they push for the third? Branch's throw is going to come all the way home. And the runner will be safe on a low throw. So a triple by Copeland will have a bases clearing triple. It's already 3-0 mean machine here in the top of the first. And now it is Peters, the second baseman. Who's going to line this one foul? And hits softly over to Roberson at third. The throw over. Third baseman grounds out to the other. Not before. Me Machine scores three on the triple by Copeland. They lead here going to the bottom of the first. Josiah Luna, who's still in need of a game off or a day off. Not just a game, but an entire day. Versing Franco Murphy. It's going to be a bullpen day for Mean Machine. This ball is lined foul. A 1-2 count the pitch is high. Luna chases it out number one. Oh, that's inside. 
This ball is going to be hit over to Peters at second, and that's going to be the second out. And now it's Whitney, the shortstop, who will get his first at bat against the reliever Murphy. And this ball is going to be hit through the hole. That's going to be a two out single by Whitney. Here is Evermore Buchanan, the RBI leader of the league. Go inside. Ball. Ball inside. And a 3 1 count to Buchanan. She's going to try to hit this one over. Instead, she's going to take a walk. A good eye instead of chasing. Yeoman Cox, the first baseman, batting fifth, will have his chance with two outs. And runners on first and second, takes a big daddy hack there and comes up empty. And now quickly down 0-2. But he's going to get this one off the end of the bat. That's going to be down for Lawrence. Lawrence is going to throw it home. The throw, not in time. Great arm. But because he slid, he did not get up in time. It was a trap. It was not a catch. Good call by the umpire there. So Slump Busters will grab one, and now it's Roberson with the same thing. Two outs and runners on first and second. And this ball's going to be hit over to second. Peters will field it cleanly out number three, so they do retaliate with one. 3-1 here going at the top of the second. 8-9-1 due up for Mean Machine. The center fielder, number seven. Buchanan throws it over, out number one. That was floral. And here is Ernie Painter, the third baseman. That's inside. That's down. This ball is going to get past the first baseman. It's going to be Branch who gets it in. So they do have a single here, and now it's going to be top of the lineup, Gad Lawrence. Playing left field today. And pickoff play, he is safe. And another pickoff play, he's safe. And down goes Lawrence for the second out. Carmen Carp, who walked her last time, well, her first at bat. The catcher today. Brunette is getting another day off. This ball is fouled off. And this ball's going to be laced over to Cox. Wow. That ball came off at probably 100 miles an hour, and Cox snagged it out of the air. That's going to be the final out. Rustin Price, the left fielder, uh, who is DHing for the Slump Busters, will lead things off against Murphy still, who has 25 pitches in the first, or sorry, 24 in the first inning. And that's not what you want if it's a bullpen game. No, that's high. And the first batter is going to take a walk here. Now it is Sabrina Mashington, the center fielder, batting eighth. And this ball is hit up the middle. That's going to be a single. Flora will get it in cleanly. So runners on first and second. And here is Callan Winters. And 
and Winters is going to hit this one deep to right field, but foul by about five feet. Uh, maybe about 10. It's kind of hard to judge with the size of the players. That's high. This ball is also going to be hit foul. This ball, sorry, it's going to be a walk. I uh, hooked away for a split second. And this ball is going to be hit over foul. This ball is going to be in the dirt, and that's going to be Carp. It gets away from her. So, Nola Jenkins, who just came in, is going to get an out, but the run will score, so the Slump Bushes will have a second second run here and with two outs you have branch facing off against jenkins and branch is gonna hit this one to second it's gonna be peters out number three Apologies, I had to figure something out there. So, uh, Meat Machine go down. One, two, three, and now it is the Slump Busters to get their revenge here to try to tie things up against Nola Jenkins. It's going to be Whitney, the shortstop, getting his second at bat. And that ball is going to be inside. It's going to be a 2-2 two -two count. And Whitney goes down on strikes, so now it will be Evermore Buchanan. And she's going to hit this one in the sixth gap. That's going to get through to left field. Lawrence gets it in and will be a single. Yeoman Cox, who also has a single and an RBI today, will have a runner on first with one out. And he's going to hit this one down the line, but just foul by mere inches. And I mean inches. Cox is going to hit this one up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Runner will not advance to third. Buchanan does not have the greatest speed. So now it will be the third baseman, Roberson, batting 345, two homers, and five RBIs. But he's not going to face Jenkins. Out is Jenkins, and in is Rake Webster. His first pitch is low. And Roberson's going to hit it right back to the pitcher, but Wickerson is going to mishandle it. And that's going to be an out. Could have been a double play. But instead, you have runners on second and third, and Webster could have gotten out of the inning, but now he has to face a dangerous Rustin Price. Let's see the 1-1 count. He's going to hit this one to the first base side. Copeland makes a diving stop, and wow. Webster definitely got out of that thanks to Cox there. Cox definitely saved two runs minimally. So now it's going to be Copeland, who is facing Deputy. 53rd pitch of the night is going to be low. This one's going to hit over to second base. Buchanan fields it cleanly out number one. The second baseman, number 27. So it's going to be Peters playing second base today. Oh, 
Peter's going to help this one softly. Barehanded by Whitney. Will throw him out for the second. And now Theo Floral, who, again, a couple games ago was batting 60s. Now he's at 149, so I guess you could say he's hot. <laughs> This ball's going to hit up the middle to start things off for the Slump Busters. That's going to be a single. For Mashington, and now it's Callan Winters, who's 0 for 1. Takes a strike, and now a ball low. Pickoff play, not in time. And that's going to be called third strike. Down goes Winter, so now it's Josiah Luna, who does have an RBI, but again, definitely needs a day, a day off. Runner on first has great speed. Let's see if Matt, if they want to send Mashington to be a little, a little aggressive on the base paths. And this ball is going to be lofted into left, sorry, left field, and that's going to be just short out of, out of, uh, I'm not sure who caught that. It looked like the left fielder caught that Lawrence, and that was a dangerous play. And now it is Noel Branch, the right fielder, batting with two outs, and they are still keeping Mashington. Oh, I spoke too soon. Mashington's going to take off, and she is going to be safe. So a runner in scoring position for Branch, who launches this one, but foul. And here is going to be out number three. So, nothing for the Slump Busters or Me Machine in the fourth. It's going to be top of the fifth. Your score is still 3-2. to two. Ernie Painter now will face... Dean Deputy. No. And Cox goes up and catches it. What a play by the first baseman, making yet another great defensive play to stop me Machine from getting any runners. Lawrence will hit this one up the middle, and that's going to be roped. Mashington does use her speed and cuts it off before the wall, so we'll hold him to a single. So a great job defensively by the Slump Busters here. Which will bring up Carp, who's 0 for 1 with a walk. And a pickoff play, nothing doing. And now Carp's going to hit this one to right field. Branch will get it in. No advancement past second, so back-to-back -back hits for Me Machine, which will bring up the ever-dangerous Better Maceus. And let's see what happens. 2-0 count. She's looking to drive this ball in the gap. She's going to take it low, and that's going to put the runners in scoring position with a 3-0 count. And she can take a fastball. It looks like she had the red light the whole way. And now she's going to take the ball right down the middle. Hit this one deep. The left center field. Mashington is back at the wall. Off the top of the wall. Runners were holding up so they can advance as a sack flies. So the only one run will score on the double. So one run in. One out. Runners at second and third. It is Ned Burdock. dh and today, quickly 0-2, fouls this one back. And he goes down on strikes. That's going to be the second out. And now it's Spray Hugh, who is 1 for 2. That's 
Deputy, 3-0 count, 85th pitch is right down the middle on a 3-0 count. He was going to hit this to the right field. They're going to test the arm of Branch, and the throw is plenty of time. Maceus is gunned down trying to get an extra run, but not before Me Machine do score two. Going to the bottom of the fifth, Slump Busters are bringing up their heavy hitters, 3-4-5, and I will step away for one moment. Center fielder, number seven. Oh. Apologies for that. Just basically ripped open this thing. And this ball is going to be grounded over to Roberson at third, and that's going to be a double play. As uh, I guess I came back just in time to get a little bit of action. Here is Ernie Painter batting with two outs and a runner on third now. Deputy's pitch is high. He's already at the 95 pitch mark. And the 2-1 count is going to be laced to center field. That's going to get down. That's another run for Mean Machine. Make it 6-2 here. And that should do it. Close the book on the pitcher deputy. Let's see if they want to take him out. That will, yep, there it is. Franco McGregor will face off against the top of the order, Lawrence. McGregor comes in at 635, 176 whip, and a 7 strikeout game. And here is Cox making, trying to make a uh, sorry, a nice diving play, but instead he's going to hit it in fair territory. As that ball definitely would have been foul, and it will be a double instead of a foul ball. So now it is Carmen Carp. Lawrence gets the double there. Carp takes a ball low, two-one count. She swings at a ball way low, and the ball's going to get away from Luno. Another run will s score, excuse me, as the Slump Busters are... Well, they were doing fairly well on the defense side, and now they are just exploding on each other, or imploding, if you will. Two runs for Mean Machine, 7-2, going to the bottom of the sixth. It'll be 6-7-8, Roberson leading things off against Gunther Barton, the closer already. Well, uh, the Slump Busters were, I believe, 7-1 and one, uh, to start the season. And the manager may or may not have kind of just let the lineup go. And now all these players are... Um, hitting while tense and need a day off and not being taken care of so looks to be that way as that so um, yeah goes to show you that you kind of need to be a little present to make sure your team is ran well all you have to do is just make a lineup once a week and unfortunately if you don't do that this is the this is the outcome as Mashington's going to hit this one to right center field this ball may get all the way it's going to be cut off just in front of the wall Flora will get it in quickly, 
So it'll be a double for Mashington. The runner will stay at third. So Slumpbusters are threatening with Callan Winters, the left fielder, batting ninth. Barton has only given up one run this year. That's why his ERA is at 56, but he is responsible for both these runners. And this ball is going to be hit the left. Let's see if they want to test Lawrence's arm. I would not, and that is why. Look at that throw. Cut off by Copeland. This ball is hit to center. Whitney will catch it. Not sure why Mashington just call him off. And that's going to be out number one. So here is Hugh. Facing McGregor. 14th pitch is in there for a strike. And now it is a 1-2 count. The pitch. Inside. That's going to be the second out on that strikeout, and here is Copeland. Ball outside. The hey. Ball outside. That's outside. And that's going to be out number three. There goes Copeland. So Me Machine do not score here in the seventh. Going to the bottom of the seventh. Everyone get up and stretch. Have some fun. And now it is Noel Branch versus Selena Reed. That's outside. This ball is going to be hit to center. Without there's floral out number one. So here is Whitney, who's one for three. Green's pitch is just outside. Reed has a 9 9 ERA with a 180 whip and nine strikeouts. And this ball is going to be laced down the left field line past the diving third baseman. Whitney's going to have himself a double. So a one-out double for the Slump Busters may or may not have the uh, rally caps going here in the bottom of the seventh as I need to score a couple of this inning alone. And here is Buchanan who does exactly that. Very familiar situation. With runners in scoring position, she says, don't worry, guys. I got it. Gets that RBI double, making it a 7-3 game. And now it is Yeoman Cox. The first baseman who has had a few great defensive plays in this one alone. And now it is a 2-0 count. Cox looking to drive this one deep and... <laughs> giggity. So now it's a ball inside. 3-1. Takes a ball low. That's going to be ball four. Now 
And now Selena Reed is out, and Case Hoover, the starter, is in. So they used their entire bullpen for Meme Machine. That is one flaw of using a bullpen game. And Roberson's going to hit this one straight to shortstop for the second out. And now it is Price, the DH, facing Hoover. Hoover should finish the game out here. It's only two innings for, uh, well, two and a third. As a starter, that's not too bad. As long as he keeps his pitch count under 40-ish. Eh, should be good to go in about two games. Full count with two outs. The runners will get a head start. And this is ball four inside. So now the bases are loading for none other than Mashington, who is actually going to be pinch hit for the backup center fielder, Crawford. Uh, I have not seen Crawford in quite some time. I believe Crawford was actually the starting center fielder until the manager went a uh, MIA. So now 2-2 count with two outs. Ball's in the dirt. Full count. Everybody will take off. And this ball's fouled off. So ball in the gap is definitely going to score two, most likely three. This ball's down the line, and that can be considered the gap technically. That's going to go all the way to the wall. One run will score. Two is in. Three is on its way. And guess what, boys and girls? This game is 7-6 to six now. We have ourselves a game. Runner in scoring position, Case Hoover. Has to try to get out of this one. He's really feeling the pressure. A base hit will tie this game up here in the seventh. This ball it takes a bad hop, but right at Hughes' head. That's going to be out number three. So they do get four back here, which is exactly what you want in the later innings. You don't want to score it all in one. You want to try to chip away. And now Me Machine have to be uh, worrying here, shaking in their boots, unless they get a few runs here. But I don't think that might happen as the first out is over to Branch. Here is Theo Floral. Who is facing Franco McGregor. And Floral hits this one deep to center. Does this have enough though? It is a deep ballpark. He does not get it. 433 feet to dead center. And that ball was hit. Pretty much anywhere else, that's a home run. Instead, it is an out here. Maybe that's why the Slump Busters play here. It's a big ballpark. It's a pitcher's friendly ballpark. And this is going to be off the glove of Roberson. That's going to go as a base hit for the ninth batter, which will bring up Gad Lawrence, who will not face McGregor, but instead will face the closer, Ash Harmon. And that's going to turn... Lawrence around from the left side to the right. And now one and two. Pitch is fouled off. Ash Harmon has a .75 ERA, .67 whip, and 16 strikeouts. He's been one of the best closers in the game. And here is Lawrence flying out to left field. Third out, so... That's exactly what you want if you're the Slump Busters. Get them down quick and get back to it. Get a run or two here. Minimally, you need a run, so you don't have to worry about coming in clutch in the bottom of the ninth. Peters is out, and Ahmed is in as a defensive replacement. And Bryce Larson, who is getting uh, some playing time here. The catcher, Luna, is out. Is going to hit this one, but Hugh will make a great jumping catch for the first out. And that could have been the difference here for the Slump Busters. Branch is going to hit this one off the glove of Peters. I'm oh, sorry, Painters. That's who's at third base. And that's going to go down as an infield single. So they do have a runner on first. And here is the hard-hitting Harrison Whitney. Who takes a ball high.
Whitney takes that one for strike three. And now it is Buchanan who is trying to get or adding add to her league leading 23 RBIs. If she hits this one into the gap, it could tie the game. Not the best speed over there at first. 3-1 count. She's looking to drive this one deep. Let's see. She does hit this one into the corner of right field. And this could be... Oh, Alpha takes a nasty hop off the wall. But it doesn't matter. Maceus didn't feel it cleanly. So guess what? That is going to be an RBI game-tying triple for the Slump Busters. And oh my. We have a brand new ball game. Hoover is out. Zap Maze is in. Zap Maze is actually going to be your pitcher for the next game. And Cox has a chance to put this game away with one swing of the bat. And Cox is going to hit this one a mile high. Unfortunately, it is only a few hundred feet deep. Maceus underneath it catches it. But now, folks, we have a brand new ball game going into the top of the ninth. And we all know I don't like extras. I just want to go to bed sometimes. So hopefully that doesn't that's not the case. And here, um, if me machine go into extras, their bullpen is out, already depleted, and they're gonna have to start using their starters. So if you're mean machine, you're looking at it as uh, let's hopefully not go into that. Let's either win or lose here in this ninth. As uh, Cart gets out number one on the strikeout, and here is Maseus who has come in clutch plenty of times, but against a hard-throwing lefty, I'm sorry, a junk-throwing lefty Harmon, maybe a difficult, here she's just going to roll over to first, out number two. I'm sure the fans do love extras. You all love to see your teams play extra, extra, extras. I hate it. Stop it. Win or lose, damn it. I'm going to start putting up ties. How about that? Burdock takes the ball. 3-1 count. I'm sorry, takes a strike, a 3-1 count. He's going to hit this one past the diving third baseman, and that's going to be a single. Your go-ahead run is at first with Hugh up, and Hugh has two hits today. Runner is going, and the ball is thrown away into center field, but good backup by Crawford will not make the runner advance to third. So you do have a runner in scoring position now with Hugh. Is he going to come in the clutch versus Harmon, who has <laughs> ERA and whip both at .69. Giggity. And Hugh is going to come in the clutch here. He's going to hit it to left center, and this ball is down. That's going to be an RBI single. Mean Machine are going to take the lead here in the top of the ninth, 8-7. to seven. And now... Harmon is on the hook for the loss. Here comes Gangrene in. And now there's a runner at first with Copeland up. The dangerous, hard-hitting lefty. And folks, we might just get my wish of a win or loss here in the ninth inning. Copeland will fly out to the catcher. So here we are, last at-bats for the Slump Busters. Thank God. 8-7 to seven, your score, Roberson. Will face off against Zap Mays, who's in line for the win. This ball is going to grow it over to Ahmed, out number one. We are two outs away. A 2-1 count. The pitch from Mays is ball three. This is not what you want. You want to throw strikes in this situation. And here we go. Brings it back. The payoff pitch to Price. The ball is hit foul again. And this ball is fouled off once again. Price is having a great at bat. And another one. And this ball is going to be lined over to Copeland, out number two. So they're down to their final out after coming all the way back from down, uh, what was it, seven to one? Seven to two? Here is Crawford, who lines this one and almost makes a diving catch as Copeland, who has made a few plays today. And now down to their final strike, the one two count. Mays adjusts himself and throws a ball low. 
And down he goes. We are not going to extras, folks. Woo-wee! That will be Mean Machine taking the victory here by a final score of 8-7. to seven, Thanks to the clutch hit by Hugh. Thankfully. Your winner will go to Zap Maze, who finally gets his first win of the year, comes in a relief appearance, and Harmon will take the first loss and a blown save. His first of the year. Buchanan will walk away as the MVP per the game. Copeland and Crawford are also there. And Atachi is saying they would have cut the guy, but here they are saying they wanted to cut Atachi at least 20 times a game, and he's still on the team. So I doubt he would cut anybody. Either way, we have one more game, or maybe two? I can't remember. This was the second game, wasn't it? It was the second game. We have two more. Next is going to be the Beavers versus Gators. So stand by. Let's get this started. Alright, here we are. We have the Bearded Beavers versus the Sewer Gators. This is a divisional game. Last time out, the Beavers beat the Gators. So Gators are trying to get some revenge. Here is everybody's favorite outfielder, Sloop Whoopity, aka Whoop Whoop, is going to ground this over to Serrano at first for the first out. And now it is David Massey, the center fielder, who is going to face Kenny Powers. Kenny Powers comes in with a 270 ERA, a 103 whip with 23 strikeouts. I believe this is his fifth appearance. Could be wrong, but I believe it is five. And this ball is grounded foul, so the 2-2 two -two count the pitch is going to be swung on and hit deep to right field. If it stays fair, it is foul by mere inches. Oh, my. And instead of hitting a home run, he'll just get a base hit up the middle. So, looks like Massey has his number. And here is Class Ali. Playing second today, batting third. Takes ball two. Two two count, fouled back, and this ball is going to be hit to left field, short porch out there, but Tanaka will camp underneath it, out number two. Now batting the third baseman, number three. It is going to be Cherry Flores, batting fourth today, playing third base. Runner on first has great speed. Let's see if they want to test the arm of uh, Tamlin. This ball's going to be hit over to Taverna at short. Out number three, so nothing for the Beavers after the hit. It'll be Willie Mays Hayes leading things off for the Gators here at home. Batting 257 with a homer and five RBIs. And if I'm not mistaken, has seven or eight stolen bases on the year. One of the top leaders in stolen bases. And he's going to hit this one to right field. Back is the right fielder. Peterson catches it in foul territory, out number one. And that's going to bring up the second batter, Tanaka, playing left field. Gonzalez, uh, Colin Gonzalez, is your starter for the Beavers. 566 ERA, a 140 whip with 14 strikeouts. And Tanaka's going to hit it in the same spot. But this ball is a little bit deeper, and it is gone just past Peterson's Outstretched glove. That's going to be a solo shot for Tanaka. He's had some power of late. 360 feet. He has four home runs in the last three games, if I'm not mistaken. That's going to put the Gators up early. 1-0. And 
And here's the catcher, Brick Tamlin. Tamlin's going to ground this one over to third. Flores easily throws it over out number two. Here is Pedro Serrano. Inside. And Serrano's going to get a base hit to the right side for a two-out single. And uh, the announcer is not biased to the Gators, although I most certainly can be because the Beavers is managed by the AI. So... Let's go Gators, why not? Here is DP Turner batting fifth and the third base today. And this ball's gonna be laced to right field. Peterson's gonna catch it. And that will be a final out, but not before they do sk uh, score a run on the solo shot by Tanaka. It's gonna be Gershwin Brownpole, the shortstop today, facing Powers here in the top of the second. Someone loves the Gators. I feel like that is very sarcastic and or brown nosy as Brown Pool goes down for a strikeout. Here is Skylar Peterson, the right fielder. O2 count gets him swinging. It was a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Three straight strikes to get him out. And here will be Maddie with a Y, who is absolutely juiced, might have to test her for some PEDs after the game. 327, 5 homers, and 11 RBIs. Powers gets some extra sludge and throws a changeup, it looked like, or a two-seamer, couldn't really tell. Full count to Maddie. It's going to be grounded over to Taverna at short. Out number three, nothing for the Beavers. I'm watching you, monsters. So here is Fleming, who's going to lace this one to left field. Whoopity catches it out, number one. So now it's the shortstop batting seventh, Ginger Taverna, who has five home runs and nine RBIs, but only batting 200 on the year. And she's quickly down one and two, and the pitch is inside. Ground ball over to first, out number two. So here is the 42-year-old veteran, Emil Logan. Batting 316 on the season. And he goes down on three straight pitches. So that'll do it for the Gators here in the top of the third. Beavers will send 8-9-1 up. Which will be your first baseman, Braxton Maloney. Here is uh, Whoopity, who goes down swinging. So three up, three down for the Beavers. It will now be the Gators' turn in the bottom of the ninth. I'm sorry, bottom of the third, not the ninth. That would have been nice if it was the ninth, right? Here is Otis Landry, the right fielder, who takes a daddy hack and a half and hits it a mile high. Whoopity is over there, and it may have been a home run if it was fair, but it was not. So, out, or sorry, strike number one. And he's going to line this one over to Flores at third, out number one. 
So now it will be Willie Mays Hayes who flew out to right field his first time. And quickly down 0-2. And, and takes strike three at the chest. That will be the top of the zone here for the umpire tonight. Out number two. So here is Tanaka. Who's going to ground this one over to second? Ali will field it with that gold glove of his. Out number three. So a quick inning for the Gators as well. Three up, three down. Now back, the center fielder, number 22. Here is Ali versus Kenny Powers. 0-2 count, and he looks at one at the knees. Outside corner out number two. So here is Cherry Flores. 0 for 1. Grounded over to short. Out number three. So again, a quick inning for the Beavers. It is the Gators' turn at the bottom of the fourth. Three, four, five, do up. Now back, the catcher, number three. And that's going to be a fair ball down the first base line. Serrano does not have the greatest speed, but Peterson did not field it cleanly, so Serrano will have himself a one-out double. And that's going to bring up D.P. Turner, who's 0 for 1 today. One-two count. Ball is low, so make it two and two. And she almost gets hits there. So the runner will advance 90 feet, and here is Fleming the DH. Batting 368 on the year with four RBIs. Has yet to get her first homer. Now might be a good opportune time to help the Gators advance uh, some runs. Here is a full count for Fleming. And she looks at a ball inside. Umpire is ecstatic about that one. Looks like he's been holding it in. Nothing doing for him. Top of the fifth. Maddie with a Y, 2-1 count, and she's going to ground this one over to short, easy throw for Taverna, out number three, so here we are, again a quick inning for the Beavers, this game is flying by, both teams are just uh, not hitting, 
It's going to be a pitcher's duel. There's only one mistake by Gonzalez, which was the solo shot. Let's see how things go as we get deeper into this game. Taverna's going to ground this one to first base out number one. Emil Logan will get his second chance against Gonzalez. Full count to Logan, and he's going to take a ball outside for ball four. And now Otis Landry will bat with a runner on and one out. A Logan is going to take off. <laughs> 42-year-old is ready to go. Might have been a hit and run as that was a uh, fouled off pitch. Now it's 0-2. Landry is going to hit this one to right field. Will it get down? It will. Just in front of Peterson. That's going to be a single. And Logan will go first to third. So now you have top of the lineup with runners on first and third. Only one out. Something might be up for the Gators. Change up outside. That's going to be a strike. Runner goes, and that's fouled back, so it might have been another hit and run, especially with his speed. Hayes is going to keep this inside by mere inches, and that's going to be down for a double, an RBI double at that, making it 2 nothing for the Gators. And here is Tanaka, who homered in the first inning. The solo shot. Batting with runners in scoring position, both second and third. The infield is in. Let's see what he does. He's going to be a suicide bunt. Sorry, a suicide squeeze here, and he gets it. So that will go down in the books as a sack bunt with an RBI. And that was very daring for the Gators. I'm not sure uh, what the manager was thinking there, but hey, it worked out for him. It's going to be 3-0 Gators here as they score two. Maybe they're uh, thinking they are tight on runs, so we got to get one at least. But it pays off, like I said. So now the Beavers will send up 8 9 1, and Maloney's going to hit this one deep, but foul. Power's still in the game here through 5 72 pitches. 0 2 count. Maloney's going to go down on strikes. Now back, the catcher, number 55. Here is Hansa Loins, the catcher. And this ball is hit up the middle and down. It's in front of Hayes, who bobbles it, but Loins is not going to go, especially with his speed. Here is Whoop Whoop. It's the Whoopity. Loins on first. Ball's in there for a strike. And now ball low, 2-2. Two, two. Whoopity fouls this off. Replay the 2-2, two, two. here it is. Ground ball through the hole of second and, I'm sorry, third and short. And that's going to be a base hit. You'll have Massey, who also has a hit in the first inning, facing Powers now. Powers starting to get a little winded. 82 pitches. This ball's high. And it's going to ground ball to first. Serrano's going to throw it to second. And the speed of Macy is not going to be... Or sorry, it will be a factor here. He's going to beat it out. So now it is Class Ali with runners at first and third. Base hit will get a run. Ball in the gap will probably end up scoring two. And a 1-1 count fouled off. So now it's a 1-2 count. Let's see if Powers can close it out. And he does, inside part of the plate. Look to me a little inside, Ali agrees with the announcer. But it doesn't matter what we think the umpire says. Otherwise, that will be out number three. So here is Pedro Serrano. And he's going to hit this one foul. So now quickly 0-2. And, and three straight swings, down he goes. So here's Turner. Let's go for two today. And 
And she's going to hit this one to left field. That's going to get down for a single. So a one-out single for Turner. Getting her first hit of the day will bring up Caroline Fleming, who is 0 for 2. And Fleming's going to hit this one deep to right field. Does she do it? Is this her first? It is off the top of the uh, second deck. A great time for her first home run. A 380-foot shot. First of the season and six RBIs. That's going to put the Gators up 5-0. to zero. And maybe that's a little bit of announcer foreshadowing. Here is Ginger Taverna. Now batting under 200 after going 0 for 2 today. Still has the five home runs. Make it 0 for 3 as a ground ball to Ali. Sure thing out there. So here is Emil Logan. The gray-haired veteran. Getting a uh, start at second base. And he's going to hit this one deep to left field. And that will be off the wall. As if it was just about two feet to the right. That would have been over the fence. Instead, it's going to hit off in front of the Gator here for a double. And now it's Landry. Two outs, runner in scoring position. Landry's going to hit this one basically in the same spot, but not as hard as Whoopity will catch it a little bit to his left. So down they go, but they do score another two on the home run by Fleming, first of the year. So now it's 5 nothing Gators going to the top of the seventh. Kenny Powers looking to get more of his quality start. Maddie's going to hit this over to right field, and she clearly has his number. Now it is Gershwin Brownpole, the shortstop. Strike number two, one two count, 95 pitch on the way. It is a ball in the dirt. Good hold up by Brownpole. And the 2 0 count, forget about it. This ball is gone. Brownpool hits it over his own bullpen. That's a two run shot. 5 to 2 now, as that was a laser beam. 422 feet, his second of the year. And now it's a newer ball game. Skyler Peterson, the right fielder, will probably not face Powers. They're keeping Powers in. Um, not sure why, as he's at 97 pitches, making 98. 99, now at the century mark. This ball is hit foul. And this seems to be the issue with the Gators. They leave the pitchers in, the starters, too long. And, uh, yeah, not sure what's going on. Now they bring out Powers, and here is the reliever, Lennon Mejia. One of the free agent pickups against Maddie with a Y. 100 miles an hour right up the right up the ladder, and she goes down on three straight. So good call to bring in Mejia. Some new life in the arm. And here is Braxton Maloney. Maloney's going to foul this one into the dugout. 1-2 count. Ball inside. So, down on strikes. They'll start with the top of the order here. Colin Gonzalez is out and Danny Yoshida is in who has fallen off a little bit. One of the best relievers in the league has had a... It's had a fall down, uh, I guess down the ladder, if you will. Had an ERA under one for quite some time and then got beat up two games in a row, making it over three. And here is a pop-up to second base, out number one. Now it's Tanaka, who's going to hit this one up the middle for a base hit. And uh, right up the ladder. I don't know what I was going to say there. Just started. And... Uh, yeah, that's where I finished. Here is Tamlin. 0 for 3 today. Pickoff is safe. 
him looking to continue his hit streak because he has been hot of late. Tamlin's going to hit this one up the middle. It's going to be off the shortstop's glove. So that will go down as a hit. He will continue the hit streak. I want to say it is six games now. And now it's Pedro Serrano, the home run threat with runners on first and second, only one out. And Yoshida throws hard enough that all you have to do is just make contact. And this ball is gone, especially with Serrano's power. And speaking of power, this ball is into the power alley, but... Out there is Peterson, who ranges to his right. Uh, it must have been they had a scout, uh, the scouting card out there. They played more towards the gap. And now it's DP Turner to face Yoshida. And she's going to roll this one over to Flores at third, out number three. So nothing for the Gators. The Beavers win that inning. Here's the top of the ninth. They want to score another uh, couple runs here. Try to loosen up that lead going to be Loins, who probably needs a day off. Uh, I'm not sure if he got injured last game or this game, but it looks like the manager is going to have to look at that. And he goes down looking. He gets another strikeout. It's top of the order now. It's going to be whoop, whoop, whoopity. And whoopity is going to hit this one deep to right field. This ball is carrying, and that ball is gone. A short field here is making it hard for the Gators to keep the ball in play. 398 feet, Whoopity's first of the year and only a second RBI. So it's now 5-3. The Beavers are making a comeback. Out is Mejia and in comes the closer, Ricky Vaughn. Uh, Ricky Vaughn is in to get a 5-out save. And this ball is hit deep and all the way to the batter's eye, Maze catches it right at the wall. Out number two. So now it's Ali quickly down 0-2. And, and he's going to hit this one. Turner uh, didn't need a dive, but she makes a... That's, that's actually what we call a UD. Well, what I call a UD, unnecessary dive. When someone dies, uh, dives like that, there's no need for it. Yoshida is out. Teal Winkelson is in, facing Fleming, who hit a home run last at bat. Uh, we do that for anybody who wants to make a play look better than it is. We have the UD, which is a U, uh, unnecessary dive. US, unnecessary slide. UJ, unnecessary jump. You know, so on. Here is Taverna, who's going to feel this one. I'm sorry. Ali's going to feel this one. Slow roller out number two. And now it is Logan getting the last at-bats here for the Gators. Want to get some kind of insurance to help out Vaughn, who has not been the best closer. Has two blown saves this year. And Logan's going to hit this in the same spot he did last time, but not as deep. Out number three. So, last at-bats here for the Beavers. Ricky Vaughn's in to close it out. Needs three more, and here is Cherry Flores. Flores swings on that one. Wild Things pitch is in the dirt. Make it two and two. And she's going to roll this one over. It's going to hit the bag. Turner's going to field it off the bag. Low throw, but there is Serrano with a great glove. And uh, Stretch gets her out for number one. Now it's Brownpool who had the two-run homer last at bat to give the Beavers closer. Takes two balls, make it three. And Vaughn walks him on four straight. Maybe he's a little intimidated. But now you have the tying run up to bat. And Peterson is out. It's going to be Cade Brooks who has a little bit of pop here. Three home runs. And if anything follows suit, Vaughn will give up a two-run homer here. Yep. Yep. That's how the Gators goes. Uh, the Gators literally 405-foot shot. Brooks's fourth home run is going to be a pinch-hit home run. And now it is going to be Maddie who is pissed off. She's going to try to take... Vaughn deep. Vaughn has three blown saves in four chances this year. 
So uh, Ricky Vaughn, a.k.a. Wild Thing, is not doing his job as the closer. Maddie with a Y is very upset with her performance today. And this is classic Gators ball. Take the lead into the ninth inning, eighth or ninth inning, and then lose it. And now, two outs here is Braxton Maloney. And instead, it's going to be Brinley Jarvis, who's going to face Wild Thing. And Serrano will step on first. So, instead of winning, the Gators are now going to have to try to walk it off. And you're going to have 9-1-2 facing, I'm not sure, Cade Brooks is out. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a lot of defensive substitutions. Landry is going to field this one. Hit this one a second. Ali will field it out number one. So now it is Willie Mays Hayes. One for fourth, a double and an RBI. Winkleson will try to stand in and stop the Gators from winning. And if Hayes gets on, look for him to run. And there it is. Beanball, he's going to get hit in the butt. And that's going to put the winning run on first. And with his speed, that, oh, he is injured. It's a sore hip, so he doesn't have the best speed. But it doesn't matter. He's going to take second. And he'll be safe. So the winning run is at second. And Tanaka, who has a few hits today, will try to get him in. So... They said, put me on, I'm going to steal. Hayes takes the base. I believe it's either eight or nine stolen bases on the year for him. And Tanaka's going to hit this one to the right side. That is down, forget about it, with Hayes' speed. The Gators are going to walk this one off thanks to Tanaka. That's definitely going to be your MVP today. Gators win here. Classic Gators move. Make everybody sweat. Final score, 6-5 to five on the walk-off in the bottom of the ninth. Winkleson is going to be the losing pitcher with the blown save. That's going to be his first of the year. Ricky Vaughn will have another blown save, but that is his third win because they're all blown saves, and he was the winning pitcher. Uh, ERA is 736. That's abysmal for a closer. And, uh, again, third win. The Gators will take it. Tanaka is going to be your MVP. Three of the six runs scored, including a home run and a double. Uh, Kenny Powers pitched phenomenal. Should have got the W, but instead... We'll get the no decision, and Brown Pole, who had the rally two home run, uh, two run homer. Next up is going to be. Uh, bear with me. I believe it's the Beavers versus somebody. Alrighty, here is your fourth and final game tonight. It's going to be the Beavers who are playing back to back games versus the Pecan Sandies. And the Beavers are going to have a brand new lineup. It's going to be Jacquez Often, the catcher. In and he's gonna ground this over to Dennis at first, or sorry, third out number one. As I said, I'm gonna go ahead and step away for just a moment. I need to go do some family issues or family matters, and I will be right back. Now batting the short spot, number 21. Got 
batting the shortstop number four. Now batting the designated hitter number 26. Third baseman, number three. The center fielder, number 22. Now batting the second baseman, number 14. The designated hitter, number 48. The right fielder, number 15. No punch. Now back the third baseman, number. The left fielder, number 21.
Sloop, Rookity. Number double zero. Now batting the shortstop. That's out number two. And here is Mac, who is back from his MCL tear. He is DHing today, so it looks like they're going to ease him back into the lineup. Batting 340 with six homers and 18 RBIs, even though he was off for the last uh, four games in uh, two weeks, I think. And he goes on strikes. Excuse me, I sneezed there. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Going into the top of the fourth. Here is Brindley Jarvis, the left fielder, facing Emerson Walsh. Walsh is... Oh, this is going to be a fly ball to short center. Ortiz will range over and catch it. Out number one. Emerson Walsh has a 331 ERA, a 116 whip with 21 strikeouts. And down goes Cade Brooks. So now it's going to be Cherry Flores. Flores is going to ground out, so that's going to be out number three. Nothing for the Beavers going to the bottom of the fourth. The right fielder, number 15. And it's going to be Top Flan who grounds us over to the pitcher. And it is uh, so Salas. Who throws him out? So Salas, or for those of you who do not know, Salas is uh, unibrow or the brow, depending depending on how you want to look at it. And I actually forgot to do this. Strike two. Here is Unibrow and gets him. That is the final out. Nathan March goes down on strikes. So Sandys have five hits and the Beavers have one. Still, your score is 0 0 going into the top of the fifth. And I am going to have to step away for just one more moment.
the designated hitter, number 48. And here is Gershwin Brownpool, the DH today, instead of batting, I'm uh, sorry, instead of the shortstop. Runner on first, and Brownpool is going to hit this right to right field. It's going to be top flame, catches it out, number two. Now batting the right fielder, Sloop Whoopity. So here is Sloop Whoopity. Right field and usually batting first, now batting eighth. Uh, dropping the lineup. Another pickoff play. I'm not sure why Walsh keeps throwing over there. I know they have great speed at first, uh, but too many pickoffs in a row, you're going to eventually throw it away. And we saw that happen to uh, Pretzel earlier today with the defenders. Not that that one run mattered, but um, it definitely. Gave him an extra run and could have helped the rally. So that's going to be out number three. Going to the bottom of the fifth, 9-1-2. Due up for the Sandys. Here is Muhammad Boyer, the shortstop. I'm sorry, the second baseman. Batting 256 with three homers and six RBIs. Gonna foul this one. And that's gonna be ball number three. So the full count by Unibrow the pitch. Swung on and missed out number one. The left fielder, number 21. Here is Frank Reynolds after the pop-up to the catcher. It's an 0-2 count to Frank. And Frank takes strike three. Now batting the first baseman, number 20. Here is Maddie with a Y who's going to hit this one. Left center, this ball is going to roll all the way to the wall. She's going to have herself a double. Thought about three, but wisely went back to two. And that's going to be a leadoff double for the Beavers. And now it is Jarquez Often, the catcher, leading things off. Well, the leadoff hitter, not leading things off this inning. One, two count, and that is in there for strike three. Walsh gets another strikeout, and that'll bring up Brindley Jarvis, the left fielder. Oh, and it looks like, unfortunately, I did not time it well. Here's going to be an ad for anybody who gets an ad. I do apologize. It's going to start in five seconds. Here is Brindley Jarvis, who's going to ground this over to Ortiz at short, and that will be out number two. Now batting the short spot, number 21. Cade Brooks, the shortstop, batting third today. Will stand in with two outs and a runner on third, and almost gets hit. It's going to be away from Frank, but... Runner will not advance. 3-0 count. It's now 3-1. Brooks is looking to hit this one hard. Fouls it straight back. And now up the ladder. Ball four. Now is Cherry Flores. Batting fourth. Walsh is out and Tiddly, Tiddly Good is in. And first pitch by Good is hit up the middle. That's going to be an RBI single. 
one nothing Sandys, and now I'm sorry, one nothing Beavers is now Macy. The center fielder fouls this one back. One two count and swung on a miss for the final out breaks his bat in disgust and I will be right back. Now batting the first baseman, number double zero. Second baseman, number 14. Now batting the first baseman, number 20. So it looks like the Beavers scored another run, and it is now Maddie with a Y, runner in scoring position. Playing first for Maddie, usually DHing. And a 3-1 count by Good. In there, strike two. So the full count payoff pitch is inside. Ball four. So now you have runners at first and second. That's going to be the top of the lineup. Jacquez often the catcher. Tidley Good is out, but is responsible for both runners. And in is Brinley Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury's second pitch is a ball. This ball is hit to Ortiz at second. It's going to be 6 4 3. Double play. Now batting the right fielder, number 15. Pitchers! Top flan, the right fielder. That's low. Batting sixth. 254 average with 7 home runs and 11 RBIs. Uh, it's a lot of home runs and not a lot of RBIs for those home runs. A lot of them have been solo shots. Hits this one deep to right field, but foul. Payoff pitch from Unibrow is going to hit deep to right field. This ball is going to get past the outstretched glove of Whoopity in right field all the way to the wall. That'll be a leadoff double for Flam as the Sandys have something here in the bottom of the 7th. going to be Dennis, who hits us to left field. Can of corn, Jarvis catches it out, number one. Now back, the center 
March is out and Cal Weiss is in the backup catcher. Head over to first. Out number two. So Muhammad Boyer trying to come in clutch here and does exactly that. Hits this ball all the way to the wall. One hopper. And that's going to trade places. Well, not trade places. She's only going to get a double. Well, run one will score. 2-1 here in the bottom of the seventh. Drew Douglas, the left fielder who bats first, has a chance to tie this game on one hit. And Unibrow is struggling here in the seventh. 88 pitches make it 89 balls inside. So the 90th pitch of the day is a ball in the dirt. And Douglas is going to hit this one. Left field, it is down. Jarvis is going to throw it home. They are going to test the run. The throw is in time. And the catcher often drops it. Oh, my. Frank is out, and Faye Hiker is in. Out is Unibrow, as it definitely should have been out of the inning. And in is Winkelson, Teal Winkelson. And that definitely cost him a win today. So he is in line for a no decision. And if the runner scores, that will be a loss for him. Faye Hiker's going to hit this one to left field. Does Jarvis have enough room? She does. Out number three. So not before the error by the uh, catcher, often, will give that run in. And now it's... 2-2 game, brand new, top of the ninth, or sorry, top of the eighth. Jarvis is caught looking, out number one. Here is Cherry Flores, who's going to round this one softly to Ortiz at short, barehanded, and beats her by half a step. Oh my, what a play. And she was hustling down that line. Now back, the first baseman, number double zero. Bottom of the eighth. Here is Charlie. Charlie hasn't hit a home run since... Uh, you know, first couple games. And you definitely do, but instead it's not going to be here. It's going to be ground out to second. Here is Ortiz. Ortiz takes a walk. So here is Mac back in his first game since the injury, and he has a chance to put the lead up. Instead, he's going to ground out the third, but since the runner was moving, they'll put him in roaring sp scoring position for Top Flan, who's two for three today. Two count. Winkelson's 18th pitch. Ball three. So now full count. Flan's going to hit this one to first base. Maddie with a Y will grab it out number three. Top of the ninth. Beavers need something as they are. The center fielder, number 22. Are there a possibility? Possibility. Jeez, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. There's a possibility of them losing two games in the bottom of the ninth unless they score a run here uh, to walk-offs. So first batter is an out. 
Now what you want here is the third batter, Class Ali. Bromhold gets a base hit up the middle, so there is some life here in the top of the ninth. For the for the Beavers, out is Shaftesbury, in is Bonvertre, the closer for the Sandys. One-one count to Whoopity, and he swings at a ball low, strike two. Full count, runner will advance on the pitch and he walks so that puts the go-ahead run at second with Maddie who bats ninth for some reason tonight with a 311 average five home runs and 11 RBI she has the chance to do what all people want and the nine hole is coming the clutch She will not, and now the Beavers are prone to losing two in a row in the bottom of the ninth in back-to-back -back games here. Dennis will face Winkleson. One-two count, and the pitch by Winkleson is low. Full count. Payoff pitch is swung on and hit deep, but foul. Dennis will roll over to Maddie at first, out number one. Here's Kelly Wise, the backup catcher, and oh, just missed a walk-off home run by mere feet. If she could have just swung a tad bit later, that would have been a walk-off for the Sandys. Instead, she can hit it the first for the second out, and now it is Muhammad Boyer, but he's not going to face Winkleson. He's going to face the closer, Cohen McKee. And Boyer has a lot of pop. Instead, he's going to roll over to Flores, and guess what, folks? Of course, it's the last game of the night, and what do we have? Extras. <laughs> Something your boy hates. Well, at least on the nights that I have to go to bed. But here we are, top of the 10th, ground ball to short out number one. Here is Jarvis, 2-2 two -two count. She's gonna hit this one foul. And swings at a ball in the dirt. Out number two. So here's Cade Brooks, 0 for 3 with the walk. Full count, two outs. The pitch is swung on and missed. Nothing for them in the 10th. Here are the Sandys try to walk it off with the top of the lineup coming up. And here it is, folks. Douglas, the leadoff hitter, is on at first. The game-winning run. And now it is Faye Hiker. 
to see if they want to let her swing or bunt him over. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna let her swing. And instead, they are gonna bunt. Surprise, surprise. And she pops it up to the catcher, often who catches it and through almost gets a double play. So now it's gonna be Charlie who's probably gonna swing away now. Especially with his bat. And Charlie does that. He hits this deep to right center field. And this ball's off the top of the wall. It's going to go all the way there. Whoopity's going to get it in. The run is going to come in all the way from first. And that is it, folks. Douglas's speed wins it. The Sandys will go ahead and walk it off against the Beavers. And the Beavers have lost two games in a row on... <clears throat> Sorry, in walk-off fashion... 3-2 to two is your final score. Your MVP clearly has to go to... Uh, oh, I'm blanking on who just hit that. <laughs> Douglas scored. It was uh, Charlie Day. Excuse me. Bon Vertre is going to get the win, making him 1-0. and And McKee will get the blown save and the loss, 2-1. and one. Actually, it's not going to be a blown save because it would just be a loss. There was no save opportunity. Uh, Una Brown is going to be your MVP according to the game. Emerson Walsh, your second. And Brew Douglas, who scored the winning run, third. So, that will do it for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. Our next stream will be on Wednesday, and that will be an extremely long one as I'm trying to get as many games in um, here shortly. Looking to do 10 to 12 games, possibly a uh, six to eight hour stream. So we will see how that goes. And um, thank you all for watching. I will post this to YouTube in a couple days. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you for the support. Thank you for watching you, the, your teams play and win and or lose. I will get back to you shortly. This is your commissioner signing out. Bye-bye.